to come to Sydney, so here we are. We get to enjoy it with you folks. Amen, amen, amen. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, 105, and then to 1 John 1 and verse 5. We're going to look at the subject of light today. Living in the light will be our title. And the light is shown through God's Spirit and God's Word and how that relates to you. Psalms 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 1 John 1 and 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light. Not an essence of light, not a resemblance of light, but God is light. You may be seated today. I believe I'm preaching to the last generation before the coming of the Lord. I believe I'm looking at people that will actually and literally hear the sound of the trumpet. And in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, mortal will put on immortality. The dead in Christ are gonna rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air. That's the blessed hope that we have as believers today. But along with that blessed hope of a resurrection, there is the hope that there's going to be a great revival and outpouring in the last day. That also tells me that I'm looking at people that between now and the coming of the Lord, you're going to be involved in God's kingdom like you have never, ever been involved before. I don't know what limitations you have upon your ability and ministry, but it is the will of God today that you would leave this house, transform in your thinking that God wants to work through me to reach my generation. Will you preach with me today? When we talk about light, there's three different forms of light mentioned in the Bible. When we see the temp tabernacle, it is the outer court, which is just the natural light. We slide into the holy place, there is candlelight. It represents the supernatural, but it must be worked according to man's ability. And then we slide beyond the veil into the holies of holies. And when we get there, that holy place, there is supernatural light. It is divine glory. It's the very essence of God himself. The book of Psalms, our Lord is is described as one that stretches out the heavens and thou coverest thyself with light as a garment. The Bible tells us in Revelation 21, there is no need for a sun or a night because the Lamb is the light. John tells us in 1 and 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Darkness can never overtake light. Light always dispels the darkness. That's why I'm excited when I read the news today. And I see corruption is overflowing. Uh, That just tells me the church is right again. The darker the night, the brighter the light. Light represents understanding. It's been said, let me enlighten you. Let me bring your understanding to a broader spectrum. Let's shed some light on the subject. It was the dark ages that represented a time period of great ignorance. When we look at light, we understand that light is important to our world. The greenhouse effect is very, very important. Plant life is very important according to light. In fact, we would freeze to death as a people unless we had the light of the sunshine. Animals migrate according to the amount of light or the absence thereof. 
when we look at light, it's good for our mental state. I can take you to places like in Alaska where suicide and depression is off the charts and we ask ourselves why. And then you realize that the sun only shines some, and sometimes in those villages uh, for an hour a day. Light just brings warmth to the soul. Light is used uh, as a measurement when we consider the vastness of space. Uh, we have to measure things according to the speed of light and light years. Uh, children are afraid of darkness sometimes. Mama, Daddy, can I have a nightlight in my room? Uh, monsters disappear when there's a nightlight in our children's room. You can go camping and there's something about a campfire not only keeps the critters away, uh, but it just warms the soul uh, on a cool, chilly night. Uh, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. What I love about this verse is he did not create the greater light to rule the night, the lesser light to create or rule the nighttime. Uh, that didn't come till day four. So what was it? How did he create the light if there's no sun? Glad you asked, allow me to tell you. Uh, it was the very essence of God. He simply lifted that veil of who he was uh, and he brought illumination into a world uh, that was dark. No wonder David said it this way in Psalms 27 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I shall not want, excuse me, the Lord is my salvation uh, and the Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? When light comes, fear goes. If you're here today and you're overwhelmed with anxiety, if you're here and you're afraid of the future, if you're here today, skeletons tucked away in your closet, I'm happy to tell you, you don't have to fear another day. The enemy can only control you, manipulate you, intimidate you, and dominate you because of fear. But light comes into your world and light is here today to show you a brand new world to see the world from a different vantage point sometimes in a new motel room from week to week you're not exactly sure where all the furniture is so you kind of slowly tiptoe there's nothing like catching a toe on the edge of a piece of furniture or a suitcase laid out there. But when the lights turned on, you can boldly and aggressively take care of business. I preach to somebody here today. The enemy has had you tiptoeing through your life. Uh, your future is a tiptoeing experience. Uh, but when you leave this house today, uh, there is going to be brand new illumination. Uh, and you're going to leave with fresh boldness uh, and fresh desire uh, and purpose, knowing where God wants to take you. When we consider the subject of light, we understand that it's a great revealer. Watch now. A lady, the Bible says in the book of St. Luke that she had lost something very valuable to her. She lost it in her house. The solution was to light a candle. And when she lit a candle, she was able to find what was there all along. She simply could not see it. She could not find it, watch now. But it was there all along because darkness conceals but light reveals. I want to emphasize this again because this is very important. Uh, light doesn't just bring a, 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 a produce something that is new. Light simply reveals what was there all along but you didn't understand it was there. Bible talks about light further. Light is a weapon. He said you're not as children of the night. Walk as children of light, cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. When you have light of God's word and God's spirit, the adversary cannot touch you. When we look at light, we understand that the enemy cannot war against it. He had confused the mind of one Saul of Tarshish. He was walking down a road of Damascus and the Bible says all at once God revealed himself as light. There was a great light that shined from heaven 
And out of that light, there was a voice that connected with the destiny of a man. I say today, there is a man or a woman here uh, that you're on the road to your Damascus uh, and the same light that shined on Paul uh, is going to shine in your light today. Uh, there's going to be a reversal uh, and your best days are ahead of you uh, because you're going to start living in the light. I want you to put the book of Micah chapter 7 and verse 7 up there. He said, therefore, will I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Watch the next verse. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemies. I got to read that again. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemies. Would you help me read that today? Ready, begin. Re Rejoice not against me, O mine enemies. Why? For when I fall... I shall arise. Watch now. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I preach to you, it's time to get up again. I preach to you again. You need to get up because God is a God of light and he's here. So this is what's important to understand about light. Not all light is visible light. You got to get this. Most light is invisible light. Of course, the light that you and I see, we think it's the totality of light. It's called visible light. But invisible light is light like infrared. Invisible light is like ultraviolet light, x-rays, gamma rays. And the majority of light is outside of the understanding of you and I. Light is measured in waves, like if you were to toss a, a pebble into a pond and it would ripple. It's called magnetic waves. And they have measured this in something called nanometers. Nanometers for you and I, all the light that we can see, is 400 to 700 approximately nanometers. We can't see the shorter wavelengths. We can't see the longer wavelengths. Animals can. That's why an owl can see at nighttime beyond what we can see. Butterflies and snakes and fish, they see in different perspectives than we can see. They, they see something that is there, but you and I can't do it because we're locked in to 400 and 700 nanometers. What is so interesting about this is we take this little, small, minute. How little, small, and minute? Are you ready for this? 99.97% of light cannot be seen by humans. Every decision we make is off a of 0.03%. We put glasses on it. We have surgery on it. We, we, we work with what we have. But no matter how much work we do, the only amount of light that you and I see is 0.03%. The greater light is out there. You and I don't have the ability in our natural understanding and perception. How could we tell God how to live our life? How could we make a determination what is right and wrong and what I need to deserve to be the ultimate out when all we're dealing with is 0.03% and we're instructing the man who is not just an attribute but the very essence of light himself. I remember reading a verse that says the natural man cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit because they are foolishness to him. That's why when your preacher begins to preach that you must be born again of water and spirit, it may not make sense to you because grandma did have it, but don't you forget you're judging life off a of 0.03%. 
The Bible says unless you're born again, you cannot even see the kingdom of heaven. But when you're born again, you go from 0.3% to the God of all light inside of you. To your natural man, a life separated under the Lord doesn't make sense. A crooked and perverse generation that we're to save ourselves from. To come out from among them and be ye separate to the natural man, it's foolishness. But we're only operating in 0.03%. But when you have the God of light that is birthed inside of you, all at once, you don't live life from a rejected posture. You don't live life from a defensive posture. You don't read the news and be overcome with anxiety. You read the news and you say, dear God, you're at work again. You read the news and you say, God, you're ruling and reigning in the earth. You're establishing your kingdom and you're wrapping this thing up. I'm looking at people today that the light of God's word said he's gonna use you in this last day. Come on, raise your hands. Let revelation come into your spirit right now. First Corinthians 2 and 9. But it's written, I hath not seen. I hath not seen. Ear hath not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. I want to preach to you that God loves you today. You don't earn this love. You can't perform your way into this love. You can't behave yourself good enough. He loved you while you were yet a sinner. You don't get that in the world. But when you get the revelation of light, he loved you first. We love him because he first loved us. That's the revelation. Down here, it's filial love. If you do me wrong, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you twice as hard. But God says, no. I love you because I am agape love. That's what living in the light is. Verse 10, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the Spirit searches the deep things of God. 10, 12 spies went into the country. 10 brought back an evil report. Two brought back a victorious report. The difference is one was living in the light. One group was living in the light. One was just judging life by giants. They just looked around at a, at a material world. They just looked around and they said, of course that could never happen for me. Look how large they are. Look how insignificant. I'm just a grasshopper in my sight. That's what the enemy tells you. Until light comes in your heart. And when light comes in, you turn into a David, uh, that is just a shepherd boy. Uh, He's still got pimples, uh, but he has understanding because of revelation that he's living in the light. He said, I come to, he didn't even call him a giant. I come to you in the name of the Lord, uncircumcised Philistine. He's saying, I'm in the covenant. I'm in the covenant. And when you're in the covenant, the adversary cannot touch you. So what are you afraid of today? God has called this generation not just to survive. It's not hold the fort. When I was praying, I kept seeing David's old sword. There's not another one like it in the valley. I want to preach to someone today that you used to have a dream inside of your heart. 
you used to boldly confess it. You used to declare that God was going to subdue nations, but the cares of this life and the process of life has come and worn away your strength. God sent this person from the states to tell you it's time to put on the goggles of God's light today and see in the spirit again. God's called you for this hour. Nothing can stand before the church of the living. Did not he say upon this rock I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Hebrews chapter 11. Moses, see something that everyone else doesn't see. See, I'm a, a hunter. I love to hunt. We do a lot of driving at home in between cities. And I just naturally see deer all over the place. <laughs> oh, baby, did you see the buck under that tree? I know you guys aren't gun people here. Maybe you can't relate, but my heart just starts beating fast. My eyes, my pupils get big. My mouth starts watering when you see a trophy buck. And you know what she tells me? What buck? How in God's green earth? A buck is a male deer, if, if I'm not speaking Greek here. How could you not see that great? Maybe, maybe I need to talk about a perfect wave to surf on or something since I'm in Australia speak your language but my eyes have been trained to I don't even try to do it and I can spot it that's what God wants to do in the spirit that's what God wants to do by the promises of his word this is not going to be something that you try to do it's going to be second nature to you you're going to start seeing things differently you're not going to fear the adversary you're not going to fear the future you're going to rise and say for this purpose was I born I've been sent to this world to reach and serve my generation you're going to do it in light and light so Moses let me move quickly Moses Bible said when he was young he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season anytime you see somebody that compromises their faith and conviction it's because they've been blinded by the greater reality of life. They've reverted back to that 0.03% and they've lost perspective of how big and grand God's kingdom is. Esteeming the reproaches of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, he had respect under the recompense of the reward. What does that mean? There was coming a payday someday. That's why he lived. Verse 27 by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Watch now. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Invisible to the natural man. Invisible to the carnal man. But when you see what other people don't see, you live differently. Faith in that light of God's word allows you to look at life differently. Everything filters differently. I mentioned to you the owl has the greatest eyesight in the dark. What does an owl say or sound like? That's pretty good. Who? Who? Listen to what I'm saying. How does the owl navigate the night? Who? Who? When you understand who is in control. You're not afraid of the political scene. 
You're not afraid of the Gaza scene. You're not afraid of what China's gonna do or Russia's gonna do or the who's gonna do. You're not afraid because I see something. I see a king who's high and lifted up. His train fills the temple. So that essence comes through God. We can trust his word. The Bible says the worlds were framed by the word of God, upholding all things by the word of God. Isaiah 55 and 11 says this, So shall my word go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereunto I have sent it. Watch now. Adam, eat of any tree of the garden. Don't eat of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. And the day you'll eat therein, it shall die. That was the word of the Lord. And when they partook of the fruit, they died instantaneously, proving the word of God. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah, build an ark. Watch now. It has never rained. And God's talking about a flood. 0.03%, i.e. the rest of humanity, never got it. Never got it. Though Brother Harvey Noah preached to him for 120 years, it fell on deaf ears. Watch now. But according to the word of God, it took 120 years, but exactly how God's word declared, defined, described how it would be, it happened. 120 years, but it happened. There are some things God has spoken over you that perhaps you have not seen it yet. Don't you dare give up. It shall happen according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to two old people, Abraham and Sarah. This time next year, you're going to have a baby. And the Bible says Sarah laughed in herself and the angel called her on it. Said, why did you just laugh? This time next year, you'll have a baby. And if you keep reading down, it said baby Isaac, the baby of laughter came the self same time next year because when what God's word describes it, it will come to pass. I'm preaching about the word is the light. The word is a lamp unto your feet. When God's word describes it, declares it, it's going to happen in your life. He looked at a man down in time, some 150 to 180 years. He said, this is my shepherd, this is my anointed one, 180 years before he was ever born. And he called a man by the name of King Cyrus by name. 180 years before he was born. And according to the word of the Lord, he was born and fulfilled everything that God's word said it would happen. He called out a boy by the name of Josiah. He said, there's gonna be born a boy by the name of Josiah by name. He's gonna burn the altar, tear down the high places. And you read over in the next couple chapters, he's walking by and turns aside to fulfill a 325 year old prophecy according to the word of the Lord 325 years but when light defines it it's going to happen the word of the Lord came he said I don't want you to rebuild the gates or the walls of Jericho. And anyone that would rebuild the walls of Jericho, their firstborn and their secondborn sons would die. Are you ready for this? 700 years later, a man by the name of Hiela, and that's kind of close, I kind of botch names. 700 years later, 
when he laid that, that gate on the foundation of that wall, his firstborn son died. Why? Because God's word said it would. 700 years. Just, this is 2024. Think how far long ago 700 years are. But when God speaks a word, it's going to happen. So I want to preach against every emotion. I want to preach against every fear. I want to preach against every phobia. I want to preach against every rational understanding of mankind. I want to preach against every philosophy of mankind. I, I want to preach against every limitation of mankind because the word which is light has spoken something over every one of you in this house and it will come to pass. It will come to pass. spoke of Christ I gotta hurry said he's gonna be born of a virgin and it happened said he'd be born in Bethlehem said he would be a part of Egypt and it happened said he would sojourn in Galilee and it happened said there would be a forerunner named John the Baptist and it happened said he would be called Emmanuel God with us and it happened said he'd be called the Messiah and it happened said he'd be of the descent of David and Abraham and it happened said he'd be rejected of his own countrymen and it happened said he'd be a man of sorrows acquainted with grief oppressed and afflicted and it happened according to the word of the Lord you go right down the scriptures it's there over and over and over come with me just to further this understanding Joshua chapter 21 and verse 44 and the word of the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that was swore swear unto their fathers and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies under their land. There failed not any of good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. There failed not any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. I gotta read it one more time because I've been fighting a little hell at home. Can I preach to myself for a while? There failed not any good thing which the word of the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All of it came to pass. I need somebody to grab the word of the Lord right now. I need some, there's a light shining next to you and you need to make a choice to step out of darkness and step into the light today. In like manner, when God's word declares something, it's not only for our benefit, but it's also for our betterment lest judgment would come. And the word of the Lord came to King Ahab and said, because you have neglected the commandments of God, the dogs are going to come and lick the blood after your body is deceased. And 1 Kings 22 and verse 37 said, and the king died and was brought to Samaria and they buried the king in Samaria and one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria and the dogs licked up his blood and they washed his armor according, 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 according unto the word of the Lord which he spake. There was a king in the Old Testament by the name of Eli. He was a good king, but he just neglected to take care of things at home. Two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, who were living in sin, he talked to them, but he chose not to discipline them. One day an unknown prophet came by and said, there's not going to be an old man in your house because of your disobedience to the commandment of God and your neglect of duty. The Bible tells us uh, that the sword was going to come and kill both of their sons uh, in one swath. And it happened along with 30,000 other of God's people. Uh, his sons were killed. And when he heard the news, he fell off the chair and broke his neck and died. But the fulfillment of that prophecy 
did not happen till Solomon's days, which was over a hundred years later. When they replaced the lineage of priesthood, it took a hundred years. But according to the word of the Lord, it happened. So what does that have to do with you and I today? God is looking for a people in this last day that he can flow through mightily. God is looking for individuals that he can place his hand upon and put his spirit within and do a dramatic work of salvation in this last day. I'm preaching to people here today and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. It's not a suggestion. It's not for some. It's not, there's not an exclusion clause. If we're gonna shout over every scripture that we've just done, ran through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, let's talk about what it means to you and I. And you shall receive power. I don't care how you feel today. I don't care how the enemy has come and accuses you on your shoulder and telling you you don't deserve power, that you're gonna drop the ball again. It doesn't matter how many times you've made a promise and confession to God and turned around and done the same thing again. I've come to tell you, you shall receive power. It is in the cards today from heaven to empower you with his spirit, to empower your thought process, to empower your endeavors uh, to give you illumination in life. Uh, you're not doing this thing by yourself uh, as you fulfill the great commission. He said, lo, I'm with you always even unto the ends of the earth. Uh, the word of God says he's going to give you power. Look at your hands today. Everybody look at your hands. The Bible says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall lay hands, your hands, on the sick, and they shall recover. Your hand, not your neighbor. I'm not preaching to your neighbor today. I'm preaching to you with all of your faults and flaws. I'm preaching to you with all your insecurities. Let, let's just be real today. All of us have insecurities in here. All of us have fears in here today. All of us are socially awkward in one way or another. We're all made of dirt today, but there's level ground at the foot of the cross. And the Bible says, your hands will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I've come from the States to tell you, get after it and live in the life. I looked for 25 years for property. In our city, we'd outgrown our church. I went down to the county. I opened the map. I said, you tell me where we can build a church. He said, Pastor, it's not in our plans to have a bigger church in this city. We're landlocked. There's not room enough to have another big church. Oh, it made me so angry. God, this is not my problem. This is your problem. 20 years we had looked. 20 years dead end, dead end, dead end. There was one building in church owned by another denomination. Largest building in town. Biggest parking lot in town. And, and they hated us. I'll just tell you. They made fun of us. They publicly called us by name. They made fun of our doctrinal positions. And the Lord in his wonderful workings moved that pastor out of town, brought in a brand new pastor who brokered a deal. We swapped church buildings. We more than quadrupled our seating and parking capabilities. 
without a single note on the building. It's big as miracle as splitting the Red Sea. Not because of any prayer we pray, not because we're good, mighty, or noble, but I'm here to tell you, you can't stop the kingdom of God. You can't, light is greater than darkness. 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 Come on, arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. It's the day of life. Walk in the light. Cast out devils. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Subdue kingdoms. Subdue nations. This is the hour of the Pentecostal. When my parents went to the city, just give me two more minutes. When my parents went to the city, They talked to a lady. She was the number one realtor in town. They taught her a Bible study. She received the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. She wasn't ready to make that commitment of lifestyle to serve the Lord with all of her heart. A friend of the church throughout the years, maybe come and go every once, every four or five years, but not a member. In the process of time, she died in a nursing home and by her own words this is not me interpreting it by her own words she said I died laying in that that care home she said I went up towards heaven and I'm not embellishing it all quoting her verbatim she said and there met me an angel that said you never were baptized in the name of Jesus I'm giving you one more opportunity to make things right. She said, I literally felt my body come back, my spirit come back into my body, and I come back into my body on that hospital bed. Now watch now. She come back in and started praying, started talking in tongues, and fate would have it. Strike that knot. There was a backslidden nurse that just happened to be taking care of her. They thought she was hallucinating out of her mind, just talking gibberish. But she recognized, she said, that's not gibberish. She's talking in a heavenly language right now. Her health was restored for about six months. And during that six months, as soon as she got better, She made a phone call to the church. It happened to be on my father's 48th anniversary of the first service that they had in that city. And they took that little old frail lady and put her down in the waters of baptism. There was a promise that had been given to my mom and dad 48 years before. Sometimes it may not happen overnight, but don't you dare give up on your lost loved ones. Don't, I don't care where they may be in the pit tonight but God's word is going to reach them like it says they're coming home like it says they're coming from the north south and the east and the west I'm going to restore my families I'm going to restore the faith of those last story my grandfather was in- instrumental in bringing the one God message, the country of Russia. And he would preach it, and they would say, we don't want your doctrine here. They would arrest him, say, if you preach it again, you're going to be deported. He would preach it when they let him out of jail. They would arrest him again, warn him again. After the process of time, they said, we're going to kill you. This is honest to God, true story. They put him before a firing squad. This is my great grandpa. Put him before a firing squad and said, do you have any last words you want to say? He said, yes. And he raised his hands and he started praying. But somewhere in that prayer, he started speaking in a heavenly language. And unbeknownst to him, 
he started speaking in the Russian dialect. When he stopped praying, there was not one Russian guard with a firearm in their hand ready to kill him. And they said to my grandpa, I thought you didn't know the Russian language. He said, I don't. He said, they said, well, you just spoke in perfect Russian dialect. That if you don't put down your weapons and leave, the angels of God are going to destroy you right now. You have that same mantle upon you tonight. There's nothing you should fear. There's nothing you should be afraid of. There's nothing that you should stand up in timidity about. I want you to arise, Sydney of Australia, and surrounding church people. This is your day. Live in the light. Live in the light. Live in the light. Let's take our nation for Jesus. Let's believe that God is going to do exceeding great. Does anybody believe it? I know you believe it for your neighbor. Do you believe it for yourself today? Somebody as an affirmation of your faith, say, I believe. believe. Say, I'm a believer. believer. Say, I've been called to walk in the light. light. One more story. We started doing... FaceTime Bible studies over the internet. Pakistan, Muslim country. They couldn't ask somebody to baptize them. In this part of the country, in that, in that place where they were, if you mention Jesus Christ or leaving the Muslim faith, it could mean death. So the guy teaching the Bible study in my church says, Pastor, can we baptize them like we do at home? The way we do it at home It's whoever the minister is that dips them down. Typically, I speak over them and say, in the name of Jesus, we now baptize you. We kind of do it as a joint effort. He says, what if we get on FaceTime and we baptize them over the internet and I can simply speak over them in the name of Jesus? So somewhere in a dirty old canal, in the middle of Pakistan somewhere, four buddies got together and one by one they would dip each other down and John Slater, uh, the man minister in our church, would say over FaceTime, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Uh, and four souls were added to the kingdom. I'm here to tell you, there are no barriers to light. There are no barriers to light. Come on, step out of the point zero three percent unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. I'm opening this altar for people that believe in the light today. I want you to grab your neighbor's hand quickly, come around this front, because we're going to make proclamations and declarations today. We're going to claim that we're going to live in the light. We're not going to live in fear. We're not going to live hiding in the shadows. This is the greatest hour of the church. You're going you're gonna to minister in the name of Jesus Christ at the workplace. You're not even going to bring them to church. It's going to happen throughout the city. You're not even going to say, my pastor can come and pray for you. You're going to say, let me pray for you right now. And you're going to feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It's going to cover you as the waters cover the sea. This is the hour of light. Before we lift our voice, they're making their way in. Keep coming in close. Make room for those behind you. I'm going to pray a prayer that we would step beyond the natural understanding. And we're going to say, God, give us divine revelation. Give us divine connection. Let us see through the eyes of the Spirit. Would you raise your hands to heaven if you're ready to receive that? And we submit ourselves to your word and your spirit today. And we lay our natural man on your altar. We lay our natural understanding, our ideas upon the altar. Every rut routine of the mind, 
every default moan of the mind. I erase in the name of Jesus Christ by the blood and the promises of your word and the power of your name. Father, on your authority, when we leave this house today, we're stepping out of 0.03% of understanding. And we're going to see through the eyes of the Spirit. Open our eyes that we could see the chariots and the horses of heaven as Elisha's servant saw that day. I pray you would illuminate us, God, to view things through the power of the Holy Ghost. I release the anointing to subdue kingdoms. Let the fire of heaven fall upon Sydney, upon Fiji, upon Singapore, upon New Zealand upon every area represented here today in the name of Jesus. Now would you just lift your hands and receive it by faith. I feel something. I feel something. Darkness does not have a hold on you anymore. You're a son and a daughter of God. Freely you have received, freely give. Before we go to the next moment, would you just talk in tongues for a moment? Would you just let the river flow? Now we're going to pray. You've heard me do it several times. I believe in the biblical understanding of laying on of hands. It was over 40 years that a man laid at the gate. But a 40-year cycle was broken. When Peter and John were on the way to prayer, something was just different. And he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. See, you have something now. You have it. Light. I want you to lay your hands on someone because he said, such as I have, give I thee. I want you to lay your hands on someone and pray for them right now that they would come into the fullness of light. I want you to pray that they would come in the full. I want you to speak as a vessel of God right now. I want you to speak to their destiny. I want you to speak to their inward man right now. I want you to prophesy. Come on, you have that right. No prayers of intimidation. Boldly speak it. Boldly declare it. Speak deliverance. Speak wholeness over their emotion. Speak spirit healing into their inner man. Come on, you have that right. Cross that threshold. Step into light. Your prayers make a difference. You're simply praying the mind of the spirit. You feel that? 